Alright, time to go here. Never gets old. Never does. Hello. I'm watching you. Are you fucking kidding me? That's exactly what the Undertaker told John Cena. But will he be able to take the belt from the mightiest champion in WWE history? So Scream 4 tells the story of Sidney Prescott finally making her return to Woodsboro in bad timing because Ghostface also returns to Woodsboro with the intention of remaking the original Scream. Alright guys, we're here, the final Scream review. Scream 4 is one that is highly debated with fans, seems to be the most love or hate movie in this entire franchise. And I'm happy to finally be talking about it because this has always been a Scream film that even before I loved the first couple of movies, I thought Scream 4 was an awesome sequel. And upon rewatch, it's still an awesome sequel. So let's get into why. So right off the bat, let me talk about the thing that is usually great with most of these Scream movies. I say most. The cast. The new cast of characters that they bring in to accompany our returning cast of characters of Sidney Prescott, Gail Weathers, and Dewey is great. I love every single one of them. They are all very modern. They're all very different. They have the same charm and camaraderie and charisma that the original Scream cast had way back in 96, what made that movie so great. I loved Emma Roberts' character, Rory Culkin's character as being kind of the movie geek, especially Hayden Panettiere's character. Her character is probably the best character almost in this entire franchise next to Randy. Like those two are the most entertaining and cool characters that these four films produced. Name the remake of the groundbreaking horror movie in which the villain... Halloween, uh, Texas Chainsaw, Dawn of the Dead, The Hills Have Eyes, Amityville Horror, uh, Last House on the Left, Friday the 13th, A Nightmare on Elm Street, My Bloody Valentine, When a Stranger Calls a Prom Night, Black Christmas, House of Wax, The Fog, uh, Piranha. It's one of those, right? Right? I also love the script by Kevin Williamson, the direction that he de decided to take with this movie, a kind of taking on the remake craze of the 2000s. I thought it was really smart. You know, Scream has always been the franchise that likes to take on the current trends of horror and poke fun at it and kind of, you know, subdue our expectations or subvert our expectations of those cliches of that genre at that time. And I think that the direction that they took as far as, you know, the killer coming in to try to redo all the murders of Woodsboro, but do it in a modern way with filming everything and, you know, bringing everything back full circle while doing something very new and bold to take the franchise in a new direction. I think all that came together very well. And I think that especially after the weaknesses of the script of Scream 3, it is a large, huge welcome for Kevin Williamson to come back to the franchise that he created and leave it off potentially, unless we get another sequel, on a very big high note. I'll also say that Scream 4 is probably the goriest of all the movies. I mean, even the very first kill of this movie, a girl is literally filleted open with all of her guts just spilled out on her bed in a room that's covered in blood. I mean, there is some really gory, grisly kills in Scream 4. Still have an issue with part of the way they do their kills, which I'll get into, but overall, I think the gore factor was not a disappointment in this fourth movie. <laughs> stupid pure horseshit the death of horror right here in front of us and even our returning cast you know the characters that have led this entire franchise from the beginning they are still pretty good i say pretty good because the only one that is still great is sydney prescott where dewey still feels like he's doing his dewey thing and courtney cox feels like she was kind of just in this movie to be courtney cox and she looks way plastic surgery up in this one to the point where it's almost distracting when she's on screen because it just does not look like the gale weathers that we have grown to know 
But nonetheless, Sydney Prescott, we'll talk about her. She's been a huge positive for every single one of these movies. She's a huge positive for the slasher genre because even though Scream is far from being my favorite slasher franchise, I still contend Sydney Prescott is probably the greatest final girl of all time, and she continues that through in this movie. She's not the forefront of this movie like she is the first two, but she is still an awesome character. She's still, she's later on in life, you know, it's been like 10 plus years since the events of Scream 3 by the time we get to Scream 4. She's kind of tired of it all. She's moved on from it all. When Ghostface comes back, she's still not taking any shit. She's seen it before. She's handled it numerous times. She's not even scared of Ghostface at this point. She's just like, all right, motherfucker, bring it on. I've killed all you bitches before. You ain't gonna bring nothing else new. And I love her character for that. Also going along with the good story direction as far as the writing, I think that the dialogue and the character interactions is as strong as it was in that first movie. Probably the strongest that it's been since the first Scream in the fourth film. Especially regarding the two characters of Charlie and Kirby. You know, you got the nerd, the film geek, the Randy of this movie, and you got Hayden Panettiere's Kirby who's Probably the most physically attractive girl in this entire movie, at least in my opinion, but also she's like that cool one. She's like that girl who's gorgeous, but she's also like one of the guys. She knows all the fucking horror movies. She knows all the directors. She's got all the horror knowledge. So just that, that kind of sexual tension between those two where it's like, should we, shouldn't we? Is this real? Are you really, you really like me? Because this just doesn't make sense. That whole thing is gold to me. Every time those two characters are in the same room, it's entertaining as hell, just kind of watching them squirm at what should be a perfect romance that they're both like, this shouldn't quite be as perfect as it is. And my final positive, which is a huge positive for Scream 4, is kind of two things mashed into one, but they kind of coexist. And that's the character of Jill, played by Emma Roberts, and the entire third act of this movie. Holy shit, this movie goes balls to the wall insane in its climax. And it's all because of the character of Jill, who's revealed to be one of the ghost face killers alongside Charlie, who is a very good reveal, but he's kind of the secondary character to the mastermind of Jill, who ends up being one of the most wild characters in this entire franchise because Jill is just fucking batshit crazy. And her character's playing on that whole truth that we all know to be true about today's society and even when Scream 4 came out all those years ago, that in today's society with YouTube especially, you know, and everything going on with how social media is, doing something incredibly stupid, incredibly harmful, or having something really fucked up happen to you, or being a victim of something really weird and off the wall will launch you into superstardom and be a household name faster than doing anything worthwhile for the human race, or being an actor, or anybody on TV that's prominent. I mean, it, it's to the point where it drives Jill to have all of these murders, including her mother and what she plans to be her cousin, which is Sidney Prescott, just so that she can get some fame as being the final girl, as being the last one left alive, as being the Sidney Prescott of this remake of the original Woodsboro murders. And the sad part is her plan would have worked 100%. Jill said, fuck work, fuck fame as far... Jill said, fuck work, fuck sanity, fuck going through the typical kind of motions of life where you go through college and you get married and you have kids and maybe you do something great for man mankind and get noticed for that, or maybe you become an actress or something. No, Jill says, fuck all that. I'm gonna be the cash me outside bitch. I'm gonna be the one that everybody has YouTube videos of and everybody's gonna be walking around saying my name whenever I walk into the room. It's scary and it's fucked up to the point where it's so dark yet so geniusly comedic and that is exactly what a good concept for a Scream movie should be, is a perfect melding of those things. And just the way that the movie executes that entire reveal and that entire climax of the movie where the ghost face masks come off, you have Charlie revealed as the killer, you have Jill revealed as the killer, I've been ghost face the entire time, bitch, joke's on you. You have the Sydney and the Randy mimicking the two surviving members of the original Woodsboro murders, which is kind of like this thing that was in front of your face the entire movie, but at least for me, I didn't have figured out by the time the ghost face masks came off, so it was a genuine surprise. 
And another thing that I said about Screen 2 that did extremely well is hiding the identity of the killers. I feel like this movie did equally as good of a job as Scream 2 and a better job than Scream 1, which is kind of a controversial opinion. But nonetheless, you get the mask taken off, you get the plot revealed about what she wants to do, why she wanted everybody to die, what drove her to be the ghost face killer. Fucking stabs Charlie. Charlie's out for the count. Now there's only one victim. She's the mastermind, the last one left alive. She thinks she killed Sidney Prescott. She starts fucking herself up all around the room, making it look like she got the shit beat out of her, jumping into windows, jumping into glass tables. The movie just goes batshit crazy. And then it goes all the way to the, another climax, after the climax, at this hospital where things get even weirder and crazier, which I have a little bit of an issue with slightly, which I'll talk about. But again, this goes for this balls-to-the-wall ending, which is very cool and ends this movie on a high note to the point where it's one of the most entertaining of this entire franchise. But the movie's not flawless. None of these movies are, but Scream 4 is of no exception to that. And I will start with one of the smaller things. There's this color correction thing that Wes Craven did in this that is very odd. I actually watched this movie in preparation for this review on Netflix, and I thought maybe it was just the copy that Netflix was streaming. So I popped in my Blu-ray, and my Blu-ray has the same exact thing. There's just this weird, shiny smear with the colors that's like a little bit too bright for this movie. It doesn't feel like it's natural lighting. It feels like it's computer color correction. And it's slight, you know, some of you might have watched this movie a hundred times and never noticed it, but I noticed it right away. It doesn't have the coherent look as far as this franchise. It doesn't flow as far as the look and the cinematography and you know the way the shots are. It just has this odd, unique quality to it that's a little bit distracting once you notice it because every time, it's almost like the lens flares in a J.J. Abrams movie. Once you notice it, if it bugs you, it bugs the fuck out of you every time you see it. When you see this little color correction thing going on and this ultra brightness and this not natural lighting look of Scream 4, it's just a little bit weird. So small negative, but it is a negative. Now, even though this movie does ramp up the gore a little bit from the previous movie especially, I still have an issue with the Scream franchise overall and just lacking really creative kills. There's a couple in the entire franchise, but for the most part, every single kill in every single Scream movie is as simple as stabs. Stab. Stab. No! <laughs> Damn it. You should have seen the look on your face, rookie. <laughs> what the fuck? Ah! Oh, shit. Stab to the gut. Stab to the head. Stab to the back. I mean, it's just, it's redundant. By the time you get to the fourth movie, which is trying to reinvent things, and is trying to poke fun at the remake thing where everybody's trying to go bigger and badder, the fact that they still kind of stick to the safety blanket of just Ghostface pulling out a knife and stabbing people, it's a little bit of a disappointment for me. And I've said it again, I told you in the first review that this is gonna be something I'm gonna harp on every single one of these movies, and I have kept my promise. If I ever see a Scream remake or a Scream sequel in this new age that's by a new director, I had hoped, I would hope very strongly that Creative Kills would be one of their biggest improvements over what Wes Craven did. Despite all the amazing things that he's done with this franchise, that's the one thing consistently that I feel like he dropped the ball on, which is just creative kills. Well, Wes Craven and Kevin Williamson. There, I'm fair. Moving on from that is the two biggest issues that I have with this movie. First and foremost is the fact that the movie really does struggle, despite the fact that they have great characters on both sides of this fence, new characters and old characters, the movie really struggles with finding a direction for what we're supposed to be doing. Are we trying to share equally the time between our recurring characters and our brand new cast of characters? Are we trying to bring in just a little bit of Sidney Prescott and gang to kind of shepherd the way for these new characters to take the lead? Are the new characters just there to service the return of our old characters? The movie never quite decides what it wants to do and it never quite balances it from a story standpoint on what the direction we're supposed to be taking is. We don't really know even what our lead character is in this movie by the end of it. Sidney Prescott is not the lead. Jill is not the lead. Charlie is not the lead. Kirby is not the lead. There's not really a lead in this movie. They kind of, it's like this weird collective cast, this like ensemble cast that they're trying to somewhat equally spread the time about, but it just doesn't really 
quite feel coherent for character direction to do that. And it's to the point where it's almost weird because by the time you get to the end of this movie and you realize that this is not shepherding a new franchise for these new sets of characters because basically every single one of them die, it just seems weird that we wouldn't have put more focus on our original characters then. Because it, throughout the movie you almost get this hint that maybe they're kind of putting the old characters kind of somewhat in the background more so than they have in the, per or the first three movies because some of these characters are going to be continuing on a new generation of Scream movies. By the time you get to the end of the movie, you realize that's not the case. It just feels weird. It's just a weird balance. Now, this is another small negative because I really do enjoy the hell out of the third act of this movie. It does go a little bit too far. They even insert a line into the movie from Jill herself about this is getting a little bit ridiculous, don't you think? It's kind of the movie winking at itself. We know this is ridiculous, but just go with it. But to me... Jill's plan was so smart and so genius as far as what society has become that it sort of diminishes that a little bit when you get to the final, final act of the movie in the hospital where she didn't make sure that Sydney was dead. Now she has to go from her hospital bed to Sydney's hospital bed to try to finish her as if Sydney suddenly showing up dead is not going to cast any doubt whatsoever on her being innocent. It just it kind of waters down the believability of her plot a little bit. Still entertaining as hell to watch, still a lot of fun, still very enjoyable, but it does kind of, it chops off the one of the bigger positives of the climax at its knees, which was Jill's plot and her motivations for being Ghostface. It does take it in a little bit of a stretch of believability by the time you get to the hospital. And finally, my last negative for Scream 4, which again, is it's a small negative because I really am entertained by this movie. All of these negatives are somewhat small in comparison to all the great things that I think it does, but this one is really just a somewhat disappointment with the fact that years later, after Scream 3, you get to Scream 4, it's a totally new landscape for horror, it's a totally new generation of horror fans, it's a totally new generation of films to poke fun at and to pull reference from and to subvert expectations about, and they really don't even bother to attempt to do that as far as the film of horror, or the horror film landscape of the early 2000s. They talk about remakes and they kind of go in that direction somewhat but they reference torture porn, they reference, you know, all the, the trends of the early to mid 2000s and what horror was. Horror was not in the slightest slasher centric except for a couple of remakes. It was all remakes of all the classic horror films and torture porn. Saw, Hostel, all that kind of shit. And the movie just doesn't ever really attempt to dip its foot into commenting or even making any kind of a statement about the current landscape of horror when Scream 4 came out, which is disappointing because that's exactly what the entire purpose of Scream was when it came out in the mid-90s, was to make a statement about what horror was at that time, which was slashers starting to dwindle down and Scream came in to rejuvenate it and bring it back. When you get to Scream 4, it tries to, I don't know if it tries to rejuvenate the slasher franchise necessarily because it doesn't do that, but they just kind of stick to the tried and true formula of the first couple of films when the horror landscape doesn't necessarily welcome that. And I think that's one of the reasons why the movie wasn't all that financially successful by the time it came out was because what Scream is wasn't really what the horror landscape needed in the mid to early 2000s. They needed to kind of evolve that and make a statement and try to, you know, work a little bit of that torture porn shit into the story, which might have even helped with some of the kills with a little bit of stagnant that I, uh, statement that I had about that with just being stabs incorporate some of that and make this more of a modern scream in the sense that it actually tackles what horror is by the time it comes out and not just stick to the formula of Scream 1, Scream 2, and Scream 3. So I still love this movie as a Scream movie. I still think it is one of the better of this franchise. I still enjoy the hell out of it and I still love it as just a tried and true classic slasher film which is what the original Scream movies were but I feel like Scream 4 could have really stepped up the bar and could have really been a kind of rejuvenation all around for this franchise if it had just gone that step further and commented more about what the current landscape of horror film was at that time. Liar, I'm over this.
So if you guys are a fan of the Scream franchise, I'm here to tell you Scream 4 is a very welcome addition to the franchise. It does a lot of very smart things regarding the writing of the story and the characters. It gives you the best cast of characters since the original movie. A lot of fun to be had in this one, despite a few flaws that will hold it back for some of you. But still, all around, a great Scream movie. So definitely go out and buy it. So what do you guys think of Scream 4? Are you on the camp that hates this movie? There are those out there that hate it, that think it's the worst of this franchise, which boggles my mind. Or are you on the camp like me that thinks it's a really, really good Scream sequel? Is it your favorite by any means? Tell me if it is. I'm going to be doing a Scream ranking as well, probably in a couple of days, so keep your eyes out for that, guys. But please like and share this video. Hit that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. Look down below for social media links like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Cody Leach Spreadshirt Store, which has got Cody Leach merchandise like t-shirts, a lot of cool designs you guys will enjoy, so check that out. And my Patreon page, so check that out as well, guys, for a great way to support this channel and help it grow and get cool exclusive content if you decide to become a patron, like the ability to choose videos for me to do, like a request review or a top five video, and also get exclusive access to the Blu-ray digital copy codes that I get in the movies that I buy almost every single week. I give those all the way to my patrons, so check that out, guys. And if you want to check out some more of my videos, including the entire Scream review series that is now complete, check that out by clicking right over here.